What's going on, guys? We're here. Game time. You guys ready to do this? I'm putting my fancy little phone holder and my fancy little phone holder holds it up. That is not working very well. What's going on, guys? You guys ready? Look at everybody piling in. I love it. All right, guys, we're about to kick this bad boy off. We're gonna wait about 10 more seconds for everybody to jump in, and then we will get this party started. I'm telling you guys, you're in for a ride right now. I'm feeling like I'm in the mood to teach something, so I'm gonna pull back the curtain on my multi-million dollar real estate investing business and show you the goods and teach you guys how to go out there and make your own humongous, amazing, perfect piles of cash flipping houses, all right? Class is in session, that's right, all right. Let me do this. Let me take a little drink. Get fired up. It's been a minute. I haven't been on Periscope in a while because I've been super busy. So, um, IUP grade says, what is this? This is uh, probably what's gonna be the defining moment in your life that's going to inspire you to start real estate investing, and I'm gonna teach you how to flip houses with little to no money down. Now, my name is Cody Sperber. I am known as the Clever Investor. I'm the CEO of cleverinvestor.com. We're a real estate investing educational company out of Phoenix, Arizona. So if you are brand new to my scopes, I want to say welcome. I'm very, very happy that you're here. Um, go ahead and just uh, over in the bottom corner, click that little button and uh, make sure you follow me. Uh, pretty much I'm going to just uh, spend the next 20 to 30 minutes with you guys just kind of going step by step by step how to flip houses and uh, the good news is we're gonna dispel some myths we're gonna show you how simple and fun and profitable this business can be I hope that I can be a change agent in your life and really inspire you to get in the game stop hesitating stop wasting time stop working for somebody else actually get in the game and you can do this in your local area it doesn't matter if you're a big city small town doesn't matter if you're black white man woman Asian Indian does not matter you're gonna be able to do this all right there's uh, no no qualifications other than you just making that decision that you want to get in the game all right so here we go look at how many people are on this scope so first off thank you for sharing this I have a goal right we're gonna we're gonna just go nuts and have a heart attack this entire time uh, the goal is a hundred thousand hearts I've never done it so if I'm dropping uh, good information to you guys and you guys can really see value in this please give me lots of hearts if every single person on the scope gave me you know 50 to 150 hearts we're gonna be in the game all right all right so with that said um, we're gonna start, thank you guys, we're gonna start all the way at the beginning. So for those of you that are already in the game, you guys are flipping some houses, maybe you're really experienced, I'm gonna eventually get to, uh, to a point where we start talking about lead generation. Everybody who's doing a lot of deals knows and they understand that it's all about systems and lead generation when you're ready to take your business up to that next level. But what about those people that are just getting in the game, right, they, they haven't quite flipped a house yet. They don't really understand the concepts. Maybe they have this preconceived notion of what real estate investing is. Uh, maybe they think of it a very traditional way. How many of you guys right now on this scope, right, think of real estate as going to a real estate agent, needing to have 10, 20, 30 percent down, okay, going to a real estate agent, finding, asking them to go find you a, an investment deal, you have to put 20, 30, 40% down, you go to a bank, you get a loan, and then you buy a house and you stick it into a rental portfolio. How many of you on this call actually think that that's real estate investing? Mike Glenn said at first I did. Yeah, I used to think that way, says Kiko. Faja Mali, one, says me, that's what I think. All right, I mean, so you can see this is very prevalent. This was me. 11 years ago now I've been flipping houses for 11 years and it's crazy when I think about it it's like a it's like a blink of an eye from where I was that kid that was hesitant to, to talk to people that that I was dead broke I didn't have a lot of resources I didn't have any relationships I didn't have anything but a hope and a dream right there might be some of you on this scope that can relate to that well there I was 11 years ago thinking I don't I don't have 20% down I don't even know a real estate agent. How am I gonna flip houses? How am I gonna become a real estate investor? How is that even possible? 
I'm going to have to work at some job, work my way up the corporate ladder, pray that the day before uh, I'm supposed to retire, I don't get fired. They give me a nice little watch and, and ship me on my way, right? That's my road to wealth. You know, so I was very lucky. I had some people in my lives. I read some books. I started educating myself. I started understanding that there's this totally creative, clever way of doing real estate. The reason I call myself the clever investor is because once I understood that this creative world existed, I was in love. I became so passionate and I fell head over heels in love with flipping houses and doing it very creatively. So that's what we're going to talk about on today's scope. You do not, I, I have students that are doing this in big cities, competitive cities like New York, okay, San Diego, Los Angeles. I have students that are in some podunk town in Iowa with one traffic light and a thousand houses. Okay, and they're and they're making a killing because there's it doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter what your background is. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're that scared kid like I was that was nervous to get on the phone and talk to somebody because I didn't know what to say. I was so scared because I I I I felt like oh man, I'm going to screw this up. I'm going to sound stupid. They're going to totally say, you know, hang up on me and say, why would I ever sell to this kid? Right, that was me 11 years ago, and uh, I'm just here to tell you that if you have the right systems. You have the right knowledge, you have some guidance, you have somebody that's already been there and done that, hold your hand, you start to realize that I can do this. It's not that difficult, it's simple. I can, I can put some systems together and I can read some scripts and I can fill out some paperwork and I st can start flipping houses and it doesn't have to be that hard. If you're one of those people that have been going to boot camps and seminars and, and they're these gurus that are trying to sell you some bus tour, you don't need that crap, okay? That's not you, that's not what you need. Okay? You just need some very simple processes. All right? So without getting too much into the, the dispelling of myths, I feel, I feel like we've done that now. It's time to dive into the actual concept of flipping houses with little to no money down. Okay? You don't need a lot of money. You don't even need to buy a house. Okay, I'm going to say that again. You don't need a lot of money. You don't even need to buy a house. All right, let me show you what I mean. Now, I got here. What's up, Ambition? Welcome to the party. I got my little uh, whiteboard here, all right? So for those of you that are brand new, how many people on this Periscope are brand, brand new? Meaning you don't even understand wholesaling yet. You don't understand the concept, okay? Throw it up there if you're brand, brand new. Look at, look at how many people raising their hand right now. There's a lot, all right? There's a lot. Hold on, I'm, tr I'm looking for something. Look at everybody. You guys are all brand, brand new. Aha, I found it. I found what I was looking for. I'm gonna teach you guys something. All right, so here, here's how it goes. Ready? All right. all right, so we got my little whiteboard and I'm gonna try and do this, guys. Uh, I'm gonna try and do this. Okay, bear with me. All right. Bear with me. You guys like my socks today? Tell me I have nice socks on, and I'll show you what I'm going to show you. Got to have nice socks. Power socks. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let go. So, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Thank you. Sexy socks. Okay, here we go. Suck, drop out, success. My socks are awesome. Don't say that. All right, so check this out. Here's a house. Okay, what do you think is more valuable in the world? Hold on, let me just take care of this guy real quick because obviously he doesn't want to hang out with us. All right, um, what do you think is more valuable? All right, a house. Okay, what is more valuable? A house or a contract. What is more valuable? A house or some paperwork? For everybody that's brand new, look at, look at what everybody's saying. These are people that have been following me for a while now. Most people are saying a contract. That's because they're in the know. They've been enlightened. Okay? 
the house is less valuable than this contract. All right, the paperwork is the key to no money down real estate investing. Once you understand why this is more valuable than this, all of a sudden you're gonna to start to understand how you can go out there and make money as a creative real estate investor. So this is how it works. We're as real estate investors, okay? And thank you for giving me all these hearts. As real estate investors, we're always trading, okay, cash for houses, right? That's the trade-off, and there is a value to cash. Any investor, whether you're buying stocks or bonds or gold or or you're flipping, you know, you're 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 investing in uh, money accounts. Um, what do you guys call it? Forex, um, or do you're doing real estate? You're always expecting to get a good deal in exchange for your cash, right? So. There are cash buyers out there in the world. They're called landlords. They're called rehabbers, fix and flippers, right? These are people that as a profession or as an investment, um, as a way to invest, they're either adding properties to their portfolio or they're buying houses, renovating them, adding value to them and flipping them, okay? Putting them back on the market and trying selling them for retail. Those are the actual cash buyers of the world. But here's you, right? Maybe you're just getting in the game and you're saying to yourself, man, I wanna get in the game, but I don't have the cash to be able to take down a piece of real estate. I don't have the money to fix and flip a house. I don't even know construction. I don't know anything about that stuff, but I still wanna become an investor. How can I do that? Well, the, the key is understanding this. You, you crack the code on how this process works and you control this paperwork and, and, and at the end of the day, you're gonna control this house. All right, so here's how it's gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna show you. There are people right now, everybody needs a place to live. Would you guys agree with that? Everybody needs a place to live, all right? Now, if everybody needs a place to live and everybody is living their life and life happens, right? Sometimes you lose your job, sometimes you get a divorce, sometimes you have a death in the family, sometimes you're a landlord and you get tired of owning rentals. There are a million reasons why people might no longer want to own this piece of real estate. These people are called motivated sellers. Okay, motivated sellers. So let's say on a house, okay, there's two things, okay, that tell me who owns this house, okay? There's something called a note and then there's something called a deed of trust or mortgage, okay? The deed of trust in some states or a mortgage in other states tells me who owns this house. You guys tracking so far? The deed of trust, so here in Arizona, we, we're a trust deed state. Half of the states or a little bit more than half the states are trust deed states, some are states are mortgage states, okay? All that is is paperwork that says who owns this house. You guys tracking? If there is a loan on the house, there is something called a note. This is, this is, this owner of this house owes this bank, right? We're gonna call this the bank, okay? The bank is over here. They lent money to this seller to buy this house and they created this note to let the world know that this seller owes this bank money because they borrowed it to buy this house. So on most pieces of real estate, unless it's owned free and clear, there is a note and a deed of trust or a mortgage. This tells you who owns it. This tells you who is owed the money. You guys tracking so far? So, a lot of times, most people, the only money they have to their name is tied up in a piece of real estate. Now, if you kind of look at it like this, hold on, my, let me kick this thing on for my battery. Okay, if this is what you owe on the note, okay, you owe this much. Maybe you originally bought the house for 100K, but over time, you paid it down. So, let me get a different color, hold on. Oh, that doesn't help. 
All right, let's ditch that color. We're going blue. Sorry, guys. Okay, you bought the house for 100,000. Over time, maybe you put some money down when you originally bought it, and over time you've been paying this note, and you've created what's called equity. Equity it means this is the portion that you own, and this is the portion that the bank owns. You guys kind of understand what I'm saying? Tracking. So, if if this is if this house okay has some equity, let's say it's half and half, meaning 50% equity. This, this house is a 50% loan to value house. All right. If this house has 50,000 in equity and 50,000 owed to some bank, is this house a potential good deal to go in and try and buy as a real estate investor? Okay, it, it, need, it, it has a lot of equity, right? It has a lot of equity. And any time we're ever looking as a wholesaler, as a quick turn real estate investor, we're always looking for deals that have equity and motivation. If life happens to somebody who owned this house and they have 50,000 in equity, that means they don't have to sell it to us at 100,000. They could sell it to us at 90, 80, 70, 60, 50 before and still have enough money left over to pay off their debt. All right? So whenever we're doing creative real estate investing, our formula is equity plus motivation equals potential deal. All right. So here you come along. Okay, and we're going to draw... Let me grab this. Here's you. Okay? This is you. And you have arms. No, I'm just kidding. You are a whole, what's called a wholesaler. You're the no money down real estate investor. All right? And if you're like I was when I was a little kid, you have big ears. All right. So that's you, the wholesaler. You start putting out marketing, right? So let's talk about that real quick. You're, you're marketing your business, meaning nobody knows you exist until you start marketing, right? So you start marketing and you're on the hunt for motivated sellers, people that have equity and motivation. Death in the family, divorce, job loss, facing foreclosure, behind on mortgage payments, uh, inherited and unwanted property, uh, tax liens, foundational issues, the house is old and ugly, outdated, it's beat up, uh, flood, fire, there's a million reasons why you might become motivated to sell this house. All right? And here's you, the wholesaler. And you put out some marketing. Now, let's talk about some marketing. Let's talk about some marketing. What kind of marketing can you do to let the world know that you exist? Could you wear a t-shirt? Okay? On that t-shirt says, I pay cash for houses. Okay, you can do that. Could you stop at uh, to pump gas? And when you stop to pump gas, could you have these little magnets, right? That say, I pay cash for houses with your phone number on it and slap it to the side of the pump. Cool. Could you put out ads on Craigslist? Could you send this homeowner, if I can figure out how to do this behind me, this homeowner some mail? a letter, a postcard. Absolutely you could. Could you network with this homeowner's cousin, brother, sister, mother, father, relationship, right? Could you go onto social media and let people know that you pay cash for houses? Could you research people that have tax liens, people that have um, uh, properties that they own free and clear, fire damaged homes, Houses that recently have been flooded. Could you watch the news and realize, oh my God, I know that house down the street that that 
murder just happened in. That, that fire just broke out in. I'm going to go drive by that house, okay, and I'm going to go check it out. Then I'm going to try and contact the owner and let them know that I'm interested in making them a cash offer for the property. I'm rattling off some stuff, but there are a million different ways you can market to find motivated sellers. All right, so here's you. You're marketing for motivated sellers, and all of a sudden somebody jumps up and says, hey, I'm motivated. They might not come right out and say it. They might not come out and say I'm motivated, but they're going to they're gonna contact you, right? And they're going to say, hey, uh, I hear you pay cash for houses. What's that all about? And you're going to say, great. I, I'm so glad you called. I'm so glad you called. In fact, here, I'm, gonna, I'm pulling out something right now. I'm so glad you called. And I'm going to read this script, right? And I'm going to read this script, and I'm going to talk to them. Okay, and by reading my script, I'm gonna sound like a pro, and I'm gonna know what to say, and I'm going to know when to, when to talk and when to ask questions and when to be quiet, all right? I'm gonna read these scripts, okay? And I'm gonna sound like a pro, and I'm gonna talk to this seller, okay? So in between, here's you. You put out some marketing. They contact you. You read a script. Pros read scripts, by the way. It's okay to read a script. You're gonna read a script and you're gonna have a conversation with this motivated seller. And this motivated seller is gonna to start to talk to you and tell you everything you wanna know about the house. They're gonna tell you everything you wanna know about why they wanna sell, how much they want for the house. And maybe on at the beginning, this house, you ask them a question, so you know, if you were to make some repairs, what do you think the property needs? And they say, oh, it's old, it's beat up, and, you know, they've had tenants in it, blah, 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 whatever the story is, okay? Oh, okay, okay, so the property needs a little bit of work. Okay, would you say it needs, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, and they guess, right? And, and you haven't seen the house yet. They're just having this conversation. And then all of a sudden you go, okay, well, if I was making all cash offer here today, what was, what's the absolute lowest you'd be willing to accept if I was to write you a check? And they say, oh, I wouldn't take a penny less the 90,000, okay? Well, you know, okay, after maybe doing a little research, you realize that the house is actually worth 140 to 150, but it, it would have to be in full uh, after repaired condition, meaning full rehab. You get what I'm saying? And thank you guys for giving me so many hearts. I appreciate it. Keep that going, don't stop. Keep sharing, keep giving me hearts. All right, so you're reading a script, you're finding out everything you wanna know about this house, and you realize, uh, maybe you just go to Zillow.com and Zillow tells you, oh, it's worth 145. You're like, sweet. They originally bought it for 100, they want 90, they owe 50, right? This is what they owe, they owe 50. They want 90, but after going back and forth with them, uh, Bowler says, you gotta do the blow. That's right, we'll get to that. So you, after doing some negotiations, okay, on the phone, they say they'd accept 80, then finally 70, and then you make you come in and you make them an offer for say, uh, let's say you'll make them an offer for 65, and they accept. Okay, they're motivated. They need the cash within 15 days or 10 days to take care of bids, all right? So they accept 65,000. So all you do when, they, when you read your script and you do your little negotiation the way I'm gonna teach you how to do it, they wanted 90, you've negotiated down, you offered 65 and they've accepted it. You know it's worth 140 to 150, but it needs 10, 15 thousand dollars worth of work. What you end up doing next, uh, geez Louise, try doing that through a phone lens. All right, you're gonna put it under contract and you're gonna put it under contract for 65K, all right? And this is called a purchase and sale agreement. Is everybody tracking so far? The only thing you've done so far is got the seller through your marketing to raise their hand, you read some scripts, you've negotiated a little bit, worked your way down, you haven't even gone to the house yet. All you're doing this over the phone. You haven't even gone to the house yet and you've gotten a seller to accept 65 because you've told them a couple things. You said, one, I'm gonna pay 65K. Two, I'm gonna close 
in 15 days. Okay, I'm gonna close in 15 days. That's, the, that's, that's, that's what you're telling them. I'm gonna close with my closing agent. And I'm gonna pay all closing costs. Okay? Because, because you owe 50,000, and because I'm gonna pay all closing costs, you're gonna net 15,000, 15K in your pocket. This is going right in your pocket. All right? So now you can take this 15K and go pay down debt or move or do whatever you gotta do, but you no longer have to worry about this problem property that needs all this work, okay? I'm going to put $10 earnest in order to validate this contract. Okay, so I'm gonna put up 10 bucks. So up to this point, okay, up to this point, the only money out of your pocket is 10 bucks. Now let me, I, if I told you that you can flip a house, control it, flip it to a cash buyer, make $10,000 and you can do it, within the next two weeks. Two weeks from now, you can cash a check for $10,000. The only money you had to put out of pocket is 10 bucks. Can you find $10 right now in changing your couch by asking somebody to borrow the money from somewhere? If you knew that you can chain, trade 10 for 10,000, could you find 10 bucks? Oh yeah, skip lunch for the day, right? You're gonna figure it out, okay? So, let's go back to the whiteboard. So you put up 10 bucks and you do what's called open escrow, okay? And what does that mean? Do you guys know what open escrow means? If you give me those hearts, I'm about to change your life. Open escrow. Opening escrow means that you take your contract, okay, you take your contract plus a check for 10 bucks, okay, down to your closing agent, okay. And you're gonna hand them the contract plus your $10 earnest deposit check to your closing agent. Now, in some states, a closing agent is an attorney. In some states, it's an escrow officer. Okay? You're gonna take your contract, you're gonna take your $10 check, you're gonna go down to your investor friendly, right? I'm gonna say that again. You're gonna go down to your investor friendly closing agent. I'm going to say that again. You're going to take your contract and your 10 bucks. You're going to go down to your investor friendly. That's the key here. If I can spell investor friendly closing agent, which could be an attorney, which could be an escrow officer, and you're going to open escrow. Now, When you do that, you now have what's called equitable interest in that property, okay? Equitable interest in that property. Now, let me show you a contract, this is it. Let me show you a contract real quick. Sorry, I'm, I'm one-handing the, the phone. This paperwork right here, it's about six pages long, six pages long. Okay, it's gonna take you all of five minutes to fill this out. Okay, see the yellow in it? That's what you fill out. Okay, you're gonna fill out some blank spaces. Once you have a house under contract, the contract gives you equitable interest in that property. 
Now, here in the United States, when you have a house under contract, okay, here in the United States, that's right, and you put a house under contract, you control the equitable interest, which means that whatever the terms of your agreement are, if my terms of my agreement are I or anybody I assign this contract to can buy this house for $65,000, i am going to put up $10 earnest deposit. I'm going to close in 15 days. I'm going to close with my closing agent. I'm going to pay all the closing costs, right? These are the terms of the agreement, all right? I now have, okay, now let me, let me throw up one more thing just to, to add to you guys because I know right on there saying, I'm skeptical, Cody. This can't be real. This is just too good to be true. There's something you're not sharing with me. What happens if I can't? I just promised this lady that I'm going to pay 65000 What if I can't in 15 days come up with $65,000? What am I going to do? I'm on the hook, right? I'm on the hook for that 65000 because I just signed a legal agreement. I'm on the hook, right? Cody, what am I going to do? Be honest. How many of you out there right now watching this thought that exact same thought? There's people on there right now. Yup, yup, I did, yup. I used to. Okay, so did I, right? I didn't understand it at first. I was like, dude, there's, there's no way I'm signing a purchase sale agreement with somebody promising them to pay 65 grand. I don't even have 65 cents, right? What am I gonna do? All right, so here's how it works. We always, as real estate investors, control our contracts. We control the paperwork. The paperwork is more valuable than the house. Master your paperwork and you master your financial destiny. I'm gonna say that again. Master your paperwork and master your financial destiny. All right, so you understand how to modify the terms of this agreement, you will control your financial destiny. Now, there's one more term of this agreement that you're gonna wanna see. Your escape clause. So we promise to pay 65 grand, we promise to close in 15 days, we promise to close with our closing agent, we promise to pay all closing costs, and we're gonna put up a $10 earnest deposit. Now I'm gonna add one more up here, okay? Okay. We're gonna have our, what's called an inspection period. Okay, we're gonna have our inspection period. Okay, end the day before COE. We're gonna have our inspection period end the day before close of escrow. Essentially, by writing in there that we have an inspection period that ends the day before close of escrow and we unilaterally as the buyer can cancel the contract for any reason during our inspection period and get our $10 earnest deposit back, we sign it and they sign it, we now have essentially a 14 day, in this scenario, inspection period. You guys with me? Am I spelling that right? Inspection? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So, this is what's happening. Okay? We're promising to pay 65 k within 15 days. We have a 14-day inspection period. And any time during those 15 days, okay, we can basically back out of the contract, get our $10 earnest deposit back, and walk away. Yes, you have to be 18 to do what I'm talking about. Now do you understand, you master your paperwork, you master your financial destiny. The paperwork is more valuable than the house all day long, okay? That's why you don't wanna use contracts you download from the internet. Master your paperwork. Understand how to modify the terms of your agreement. So anyway, now back to this scenario, okay? We now have a contract. We've opened escrow. We've taken it to our closing agent, okay? Now, by the way, Steve Mayer is on the call. I wanna say, uh, if you guys aren't following uh, uh, Steve, you guys gotta go check him out. 
guy's a beast, all right? Fellow real estate aficionado, all right? Steve Mayer, okay, M-E-H-R. Check him out, he's a real deal. Steve, if you're on here, throw your name up if you're still on, I saw you pop on earlier. If you're still on, uh, type something and you guys can click on his little name and follow him. The guy's a beast, all right? All right, so anyway, check this out. So, we now control, if I could do this, yeah, it's like backwards, you know. We now control the contract. There we go. <laughs> Steve Mayer, M-E-H-R. There you go. All right, anyways. Do you guys like what you guys are seeing so far? Cool. All right, we're, 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 we're coming to the full circle of how this thing works. All right, I'm gonna set this down for a second. Yeah, it's Ask Steve Mayer, by the way. All right, for the next 10 seconds, just go nuts and give me tons of hearts, all right? Just, just go nuts, heart attack time, ready? 10 seconds. Come on, heart attack, let's go. All right, I'm changing lives. I actually found this the other day. I don't know, it's kind of cheesy, but whatever. All right, here we go. So, now what do you guys think we do? We have this house, we have it under contract, what do we do next, okay? We now have the house under contract. We control the equitable interest in that piece of real estate. What do we do next? How are we gonna turn this contract into money? Yeah, I know, super low tech, but it's efficient. We need to find a cash buyer that's gonna step into our shoes, right? Remember earlier we talked about the actual people with money, the landlords, the rehabbers? We need to go find them, right? We, we gotta get them in a very short amount of have 15 days. We really have 14 days before our earnest money of 10 bucks goes hard. Now, of course, if it takes 15 days and we lose our 10 bucks, is that the end of the world? Nope. Nope. That ain't the end of the world. So don't worry about your earnest deposit. That's why we always want to make this as low as humanly possible. Okay? So you put it under contract. You have 15 days to find a cash buyer. Now it's time to go cash buyer hunting. So what are we going to do? Okay, earlier, what did we do to find the motivated sellers? Hint, hint. All right, so now what we're gonna do, now that we have the contract, we're gonna go back out and we're gonna start marketing again, right? Now, if you've been doing this for some time, you have a list Okay, These are, this is your list. This is your cash buyer list. John, email address, phone number. Bob, email address, phone number. Susie, email address, phone number. This is your list of people that you've networked with that say, if you find a good deal, Cody, I want you to serve it up to me on a silver platter. That's your, that's your in-house list. But if you don't already have a list, you can still go find these people, right? You could, you could create a flyer, right? If I can draw. Okay, a great flyer service is dealautomator.com. Okay. Dealautomator.com. Okay, it's a good flyer service. You also have postlets. Postlets.com. Did I spell, oh, flyer? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Hey, good thing you don't, you could still get rich in real estate and not know how to spell. Yeah, whatever. I was thinking like radio flyer maybe, I don't know. All right, but you can do postlets, you can go onto Craigslist. Okay, go onto Craigslist. You can, uh, I don't know, this one, this one, they both work, right? 
put up a bandit sign. What other things? Bandit signs, local RIA, real estate, uh, real estate investing association. Okay, a lot of different ways. Back page. Social media. Yup, social media. Down at the foreclosure auctions. Some of you guys obviously have studied my material. Foreclosure auctions. I mean, look at how many, look at how many we're finding. Look at all these different ways. This is only part of them, right? This is only part of them. This is nothing, right? But if this is a good deal, would you say that this is a good deal? A house worth 140, 150 needs 15, 20 worth of work that you just got under contract for 65,000. Would you say that's a money maker? All day, every day. All day, every day I do that deal. Absolutely it is, right? So these cash buyers, they want this deal. They don't know about it, right? Because traditionally, right, we talked about this at the beginning, okay, you have what's called the MLS, okay, or you have direct to seller. Okay, those are the two sources for deals, the MLS or direct to seller. Now the MLS, there might be some other things on here like auction sites. Okay, foreclosure auction. And HUD home store. I can fit it. Okay, that's kind of all grouped in like this. Everybody knows about these, right? These are the public forums. But this, this is nobody knows about, right? You got the motivated seller to raise their hand because of your marketing. Nobody knows about direct to seller. And these motivated sell, or these cash buyers, they want your deals. And if you put it out, just a little bit of marketing, right? Create a little flyer and put it out and hold that contract over your head, top of your lungs. Look at this, look what I got. Smoking hot off market deal, okay? Now you have it under contract for 65,000. Let's say you market it for 75,000. You market up 10 grand. $75,000 worth 140, 150, needs 15, 20 grand worth of work. Who wants this deal? Right, you're screaming at the top of your lungs. And this cash buyer, this rehabber steps up and says, I know that area. In fact, I know that house, I want that deal. Right, and they raise their hand and they say, I'll pay cash for that. I'll close in a couple days. Yeah, yeah, I, I've been looking for another deal to roll my money into. All right, so you put, put out your marketing, okay? Boop, boop, boop. Okay, cash buyer steps up and says, I want that deal, okay? And I'll pay 75K all day long, okay? I love that deal for 75K. I'm still gonna make 25 grand or whatever it is on the back end, 30 grand, I'll take that deal all day long. Okay, now, this is where you have to make a decision. There are two ways to close this deal. Are you guys with me? I'm about to share with you the end part of the equation. If I do, I wanna see many, many, many more hearts than what I'm getting right now. All right, I'm giving you guys this information and it's gonna change your life. I'm telling you right now, like this, this nobody gives this stuff away for free, not in this great of detail. And you guys are the absolute best, all right? It's legal in every state, okay? Legal in every state. Anybody tells you that it's not, they're wrong. All right, so check this out. There's two different ways to close this deal. One way is called an assignment. Okay, one way is called an assignment, and the other way is called a double close. I don't wanna to get too much into the logistics of this right now. This way is cheaper. This way costs a little bit more money. 
this way everybody in the, in the deal sees what you're gonna make. They're gonna see that you made 10 grand. This way nobody's gonna see what you make until the deal closes. Okay, so there's benefits and downsides to doing the different closing. But all it is is paperwork, right? This is a one page assignment form. This is another, if I can draw, purchase and sale agreement. Might be another six pages or whatever, okay? So this is another full-blown contract. This is a one-page assignment form. Short, sweet, cheap. Everybody sees what you're making. This is pretty much a contract just like this one over here, but the terms, right, the terms of this deal lean in your direction. They protect you as the wholesaler, okay? Everybody, nobody sees what you're making over here, but it's gonna cost a little bit more money because you're double closing. You're opening another escrow. We're gonna go into the logistics of this later on in the week. All you need to know right now is either way, you're either gonna make 10 grand or just shy of 10 grand, okay? But either way, at the end of this, when that cash buyer steps up and says, I want the deal, you are using their cash, okay? Now watch what happens, okay? Let's just, I'm gonna put you in the middle. Watch, watch how this thing happens. I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Stick with me, okay. Um, okay, watch how this happens. Cash buyer, okay, has 75 grand. You promise to pay 65 of it to the motivated seller. This person's money floats over here, right? And pays the 65, okay? Pays the 65, what happens to this motivated seller? Boom. 10 grand of this person's money floats over to you. Okay, watch this. 10 grand. What happens to you when you get that 10 grand? Cash buyer gets a house, right? New money making project. They're gonna make all kinds of money in the future, okay? What happens to that cash buyer? Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I see the logistics here. You came in with 10 bucks. You walked away with 10 grand. Cash buyer walks away with the house. Motivated seller gets exactly what you promised. Boom, boom, boom. This is how we play in, this is how we play the game all right there's a whole world of creative real estate investing now it just comes down to systems and marketing have the right systems okay have the right systems and you're gonna be able to do not one house every two three months but one house every week have the right systems and you're gonna be able to do this where you can quit your full-time job and just focus on this full-time and you're not gonna feel like you're a slave to your business have the right systems and you're gonna control your financial destiny okay understand how to crack the code on the marketing and then that's how you become a multimillionaire. because what ends up happening is all of a sudden you start getting to a place where you have so many leads you don't know what to do with them all and you're at this place where you can cherry pick out the bigger better deals because you're making so much quick cash it's like payday 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 you're making all this quick cash now all of a sudden you can take some of that money and go get private money or hard money and you could start taking these deals down you can start doing these no hammer needed fix and flips okay i don't want to be a construction expert i never have been but i want to fix and flip a house and make a hundred thousand dollars right I didn't grow up saying I want to be a wholesaler, right? But I want to quick flip a house with 10 bucks and turn it into 10 grand in two weeks. It's all leads and systems, okay? So now that you guys, what's up Sean McClain? Sean's one of my students, glad to see you're on here. Okay, so it's all leads and systems and it's, and it's really just about surrounding yourself with the right people that will hold your hand through this process. As you can tell, it's not that complicated. It just takes a little bit of kind of fumbling through it a few times but just like Sean who just jumped on this that's one of my students whether it takes you one month or four months 
the second you actually start doing these and you get one deal done, boom. All of a sudden, the second deal comes a lot faster, and boom, the third deal, boom, the fourth deal, boom, the fifth deal, boom, the sixth deal. All of a sudden, you start making money, you're having fun, you're surrounding yourself with great people, and you all of a sudden, you're back in control of your life. You're back in control of your financial destiny. You don't have to slave away working for somebody else. Government's not going to bail you out. You know this. Your parents aren't going to give you a big, fat pile of money one day. Right? You got to do this on your own. You got to step up to the plate. It's your duty and responsibility to have success in your life. And this is probably the most empowering way that you could do that quickly. You don't need a college degree. You don't need a real estate license. Okay? Don't need a real estate license to do this. You don't need to know anything about construction. It doesn't matter where you're from. As long as you're here in the United States, this process works. It's the game changer for me. 11 years ago, I got in the game. I got off the fence. And I want to encourage you guys to do the same thing. Now, I want to give you a, I, I went through this a little fast, and obviously watching these periscopes can be a little hit or miss. So if you're watching this afterwards on YouTube or inside my membership area, um, you know, you guys are lucky because you guys can stop and pause and replay and, and do all that stuff. But when you're watching it here on Periscope, you know, sometimes they, they, they get a little stuck. So I want to give you guys something. You guys want a little free gift from your, your new best friend in real estate, Cody Sperber? And my YouTube channel, pretty much all my social media properties is Clever Investor. Okay, YouTube is Clever Investor, C-L-E-V-E-R, Investor.com. All right, CleverInvestor.com, Clever Investor on YouTube, Clever Investor on Instagram, Clever Investor on Facebook. It's Clever Investor. Um, yes, this works in Canada, but the challenge you're going to have is the marketing part because uh, it's uh, you guys have very strict um, rules on getting access to information. Okay, so check this out. I want to give you guys something. And this is my gift to you for hanging out. There's 250, 60 of you guys, it looks like, on this right now. And I want to say thank you for giving me all the hearts. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for just being so involved and, and, and participating. Uh, I want to give you guys a gift. Okay. I want you to go to cleverinvestor.com forward slash periscope. Cleverinvestor.com forward slash periscope okay for, cleverinvestor.com forward slash periscope thank you Luis for putting that up there and you guys I wrote a book and it basically breaks down this entire thing but in way more detail so you guys can take your time and read through it that book's going to change a lot of your guys' lives because it's going to show you how simple and fun quick turning real estate can be all right cleverinvestor.com forward slash periscope is the site right. for a couple minutes and then I got to roll I got a lot of stuff I have to do the rest of the day but I've absolutely had a total blast hanging out with you guys as you can tell I get a little animated when I talk real estate because it's my favorite thing in the whole entire world next to my kiddos and my wife all right let's see here Let me, actually, I'm going to put it on this thing because I got this thing. First off, I got this thing, and it kind of stinks. It falls over, this, this big iPhone. All right. I downloaded it already. I love the book. Cody, what are the paper um, – what about the papers to the property? Are you talking about the contracts? Is that what you're talking about? I don't understand the question. Do you have mentors at your office? Yes, of course. They give me paper into you know, in Ireland. I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question. Where would you re recommend getting the contracts from? I would recommend you becoming a cleverinvestor.com student. So come get involved. Um, you can go to realestatewebclass.com, realestatewebclass.com. Um, you can learn about, uh, that's a, a class I did with me and Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. And you guys can um, uh, check out some of our systems and, and processes. You can get access to the paperwork there. What do you recommend as a contract resource? I just, I just answered that. Go to um, realestatewebclass.com and get involved. All right. Uh, how do you get the contract? Oh, my God. Everybody wants to see. You guys are enlightened i need the paperwork i need the paperwork where do i get these okay you get this contract by going to realestatewebclass.com and uh, uh watching the class and it'll show you how you get the the contracts okay 
What are your thoughts on short sales? I make offers on every short sale that comes across my desk. In fact, right before this call, one of my good friends who's a, uh, a mortgage guy just called me and said he has a real estate agent that has a, a short sale that he wants me to take a look at. So I love short sales as long as I'm not negotiating them and all I am is the cash buyer on them. I love short sales, all right? I love any discounted, potentially, potentially discounted property. REO, short sales, uh, motivated sellers, it doesn't matter, bring them my way. What do you use for comps? I keep it simple, you know, I, obviously I have access to the MLS um, because I've been doing this for 11 years and I've worked my way into getting access to the MLS, but uh, you can use Zillow, keep it simple. Because some people want others to become successful as well. Top three Fiverr gigs for my business. Zillow is off, Flip is awesome. I have a contest for co cost fair. Go to search Clever Investor. Realestatewebclass.com, thank you. Where can I join your mentoring? You can go to cleverinvestor.com and you can click on our products and you can see everything uh, about getting involved with us. I highly recommend before you dive into mentoring or anything like that, you, you need to get one of our courses and, and go through it and make sure that we're a good fit for each other and you love what you're seeing. And, and I'm a little biased, obviously, but I'm under the impression that we put out the best education on the planet. Do you still buy in Phoenix? Yes, yeah, all day, every day. Yeah, I got four houses and, and I mean, I'll just show you guys something right now. So I was gonna go into this, but we've already been talking for a while. So, you know, this is, uh, this is how I manage my business right here. All right, um, this, this is it. All right, and uh, you know, obviously don't steal my leads, peeps. But you know, this is us just working, working deals, working deals. All right, you know, this is this is my guys, you know, working all of our active deals. Uh, this is a custom CRM system that we've modified, but you can see all our deals that we have in escrow and what we're doing. You can see our cash buyers, you know, deals that we've closed. I mean, this is this is Podio, but this is the Clever Investor Podio Edition. Now I'll show you something else. This is our M5. Uh, Let's see, how do we get there? Where the heck did it go? All right, so this is the M5. Uh, this is a software that I've created. This integrates with, uh, with Podio. So if I'm inside, say, one of these lead, uh, um, like, like let's say I'm in here and we're working this lead, Podio, um, you guys were asking me about contracts earlier, so you guys can see here, you know, this is us just filling in fields, right? Staying organized. But uh, if I fill out certain things inside my Podio, okay, if I fill it out, actually, let me go back to um, seller leads. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in here real fast into one of these. All right, so you can see down here, um, this actually spits out my, my maximum allowable offer formula, and it basically has all the information that I need. But if you come down here, and I fill this out, okay, if I fill out name on title, APN, which is assessor's parcel number, purchase price, earnest money deposit, balance due at close of escrow, where we're closing, amount left on the mortgage, how much time they have to accept, any additional terms, and where to send the contract, and if I click on owner occupied, tenant, or vacant, okay, depending on what type of contract it is, um, Podium within a split second, boom, create this contract for me, fill in all these yellow blanks with all that information I just stuck in there, and within a few seconds, a contract's gonna be created and emailed directly to the buyer, or, or to the seller, I mean. So you can see how we become systematized and organized. All right, um, I wanna make sure that uh, Santana, don't be telling people to follow you, all right? Otherwise, you're gonna have to do that on your own thing. All right, so Podio is kind of like the central hub of my business, and we're in, me and my team are in here every single day, and so I'm either adding seller lead information, I'm creating contracts, or I can even do what's called our no lead left behind strategy, which is essentially this. So check this out. We have this thing, if this thing will. See what that says right there? Shot clock deadline. Okay, if I add a date here, What'll end up happening is Podio will tell my M5, okay, to trigger, okay, so M5 is connected to Podio. 
M5 is our marketing system. This does email marketing, text message marketing, direct to voicemail marketing, all right? Email, text, direct to voicemail. And what'll end up happening, so you can see, we got lots and lots of cash buyers up in this joint. But if I click on um, send a message, I can come in here and type out a text message, choose the list I wanna send it to, and it'll populate subscribers there. And when I click send, it'll send. Or I can click, a, I can send a voicemail, right? I can record a voicemail message. And what? So let's say I have 15,000 cash buyers on my cash buyer database. I could blast out a mass email or a mass text message or a mass direct to voicemail message and the, sell, and the cash buyer's phone never rings. It just, whatever message I leave, it could say something like, hey, this is Cody. Uh, I got a smoking hot deal. Uh, just picked it up. Uh, I'm marketing it for 75,000. It needs about 10, 15 grand worth of work. I thought of you when I got this deal under contract. You're going to absolutely love it. It's going to make you a fortune. Call me back right away. I'm going to give you the address and all the information. You have about 15 minutes to call me or I'm moving on to somebody else. Okay. And I mass direct to voicemail message that voicemail message out. Their phone never rings. The voicemail hits their inbox. They go, Oh, I missed a call from Cody. I didn't even see him call. I didn't even hear him call and they listen to it and it's like, oh crap, I better call Cody back right away or I'm gonna miss out on this deal. How many minutes would it take you to call through 14,000 cash buyers individually and ask them if they want the deal? Take you like two months, right? I just did it in all of eight seconds with the click of a button using the M5. So these are the systems and the tools that these professional quick turn real estate investors, we call ourselves wholesalers. These are the kind of tools that we use. So uh, another thing it'll do, okay, I'm gonna go back to this. All right, I'm gonna go back to this, ready? Okay. Click shot clock deadline, and I put in information in there. Podio, because it's integrated with the M5, will automatically start a, uh, here, I'm gonna go back to my M5 real quick. All right, whatever. Let's see if I can get there. All right. So this is what the M5 looks like on the on the um, on the main page. But it, see this email machine? Okay. These are where the emails are done. All right. M5 will automatically start sending out e pre-written emails that basically say, hey, I just cre I just sent you a contract. It's good for seven days. I'm sorry we weren't able to come to a deal here today, but here's my offer. I hope that you change your mind. The, the offer is valid for seven days. Let me know if anything changes. Then automatically the next day it fires out an automatic email that says, hey, I sent you a contract yesterday. I haven't heard from you. What's going on? Has anything changed? I'd love to work with you. The next day, hey, we only have five days left or four days left. Before the offer expires, please call me. Let's work out a deal. The next day, it gets a little bit more aggressive, and it says, hey, we got two more days. Let's do this, man. I, I, I'm, I'm holding my partner off. I don't want to spend this money on a different deal, but let's do something. And then it says, oh, we got one more day the next day, and, and this deal is going to expire. This is called our shot clock strategy, right? We're going to ratchet up the motivation right, and the scarcity to that motivated seller all automated by just putting in some basic information inside Podio and clicking shot clock. All of a sudden, the, uh, the automated uh, uh, marketing sequence is gonna start firing out. So when you think about it, everything's wrapped around Podio. The M5 is kind of a tool that you use in your business. The people are the assets you have in your business that are plugging into those tools and making things work. You're the business owner, right? You might start off as a solopreneur, but eventually you work your way up and all of a sudden you become uh, like your boy Cody over here where I manage teams and I'm more of a manager and a motivator than I am actually having to go out and do all this, this heavy lifting. I only get to pick and choose what I wanna do. I get to cash the checks, right? That's my favorite part. So you guys can see if you go to real estate web class, Dot com right now you're gonna be able to get your hands on some of this stuff all right not all of it all right some of this stuff is only for our high-end mentoring students but you're gonna get access to some of it so that's it I'm officially done for the day okay I don't teach in a school for Zamali Molly one I own the school all right so it's cleverinvestor.com come check us out what kind of information challenges could we face in Canada 
Um, can I elaborate? Yeah, you guys have very strict non-disclosure laws, so you're going to have to hook up with a local real estate attorney that can get you access to the homeowner's information. Once you crack the code, you're, you're in the game. Watch this on replay. Thank you guys so much. Can you guys give me like, I don't know, a crap ton of hearts real fast for me? For everything I shared with you today, just go nuts. Have a heart attack. Please just, just give me lots and lots of hearts right now. Show me that this was valuable information. Look at that. Perfect. Keep them coming. We got to get Cody Sperber on the leaderboard here at Periscope. Could I post? Could you post a pic of the board in quad? Um, uh, Trishy, what, what board? This board? Yeah. I'll do that for you. Of course. All right. Cool. I'm on it. I'm going to post this picture in quad. Thank you to all my hardcore followers out there that were here the entire time. We, we hung out for quite a while today. I hope you guys got a lot out of this. It's inspired you to get out there and learn more. Go to cleverinvestor.com forward slash Periscope to download my free book. Go to realestatewebclass.com to get involved with the Fast Track Profit System and, and hang out with me and Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. And, uh, you know, just go to cleverinvestor.com and learn more. For everybody else, please uh, follow me on Instagram at Clever Investor, Facebook at Clever Investor. My name is Cody Sperber. I'm your lucky host, so I appreciate uh, your guys' time. I know it's valuable. You guys are absolutely the best. I'll answer more questions later. I'm spent for the day. I got to go get, uh, get my real estate investing on now, all right? All right. Love you guys. Peace out. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.